as in the only way to, for China to modernize is if we were to do it. If you guys did it, it's still wrong. So between the two sides, the revolutionaries were actually more hostile to the Qing officials who, in essence, wanted the same thing, which is a different political system. But because of that, so 1905, when they came back, they, they did all the, uh, all the kinds of... Um, uh, they, they went to America, they went to the UK, they, they learned about the conversation with Roosevelt and so on and so forth. What's interesting, if you go to Beijing, the zoo, it's, it looks very similar to the uh, New York Zoo. That's, because, that's where they picked it up. And if you go to GE, there's actually two pictures. One was uh, the CEO of GE at the time, uh, sh uh, have a picture of shaking hands with Dai, Dai, Dai Hongci, who was one of the five officials. And then there's another one where I think it was Jack Welsh who, who um, shook hands with Zhang Zemin. So it's kind of like uh, GE saying that, oh, you know, we've been, like China and I and us, we've been friends for like hundreds of years. Yeah, best friends for, for 100 years. So they came back, it was 1905, right? They say, China is not ready yet. We need, it's a little bit like Hong Kong, we need 12 years in, in preparation of the constitutional monarchy. Now, what's interesting about that is in 1905, Empress Dowager was 70. So at that point in time with the life expectancy and everything, they were thinking, and even the Empress Dowager was thinking, oh, in 20 years, 20, uh, 12 years' time, even if, I'm, even if I'm not dead, I'd still be like, you know, I have amnesia or whatever. So yeah, 12 years is good. So they have this um, preparation for constitution. So that's, um, that's uh, up to 1905. And so that's what's happening in the government. Now, usually that's what I talk about, but then now we have to go to the other side of the story, which is the revolutionaries. And revolutionary always the main guy is Sun Yat-sen. Now, Sun Yat-sen came from a place called Zhongshan, which is right north of Macau. Now, the, the father of modern China, the father of the Republican China, would be from there. It's absolutely not random. For many generations, Macau was actually the first, was colonized by the... Uh, by, by the Portuguese or, 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 or borrowed or, or rented out um, from the 16th century. And so a lot of the um, uh, Christian priests, the Christian priests would, 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 would start there. And so, for example, the Morrison School would be, in, would be in Macau. It wasn't until 1842 when, when Hong Kong became part of the uh, British Empire that the, the Morrison School would move. And so the first guy who actually studied in the States, he graduated from Yale, uh, Rong Hong, he was actually, he actually from Zhongshan. Uh, if you remember from the modernization period, the, the Western modernization period from 1861 to, um, uh, 19, uh, to 1894, uh, there were two guys that Li Hongzhang used um, for the building of his modern enterprises. One guy was called Zhang Guanying, the other guy was called Tang Jingshu. They were both from Zhongshan. They both first went to Macau to study, then went to Hong Kong. They both worked in the Hong Kong government, the colonial government at the time, and one became the... Um, the local buyer for Jardine, the other one became local buyer for Swire. So now, the, so, so it's not random that the eventual father of modern China would be from that place. Right. And so, and so uh, uh, Sun Yat-sen was actually a young, uh, was like a youngest son or whatever. And then, uh, and then his younger brother, his older brother actually already went to Hawaii. And, and, and uh, legend go, uh, went something like, because he, he didn't believe in superstition, so he broke one of the arms of a god in a local temple, and so people drove him away from the village. That's not true. But in any case, his mom um, brought him to Hawaii to study high school. And uh, you can still go, and he's called, his name was called uh, Ti Cheng, Tai Cheng. You can still go to Honolulu, and you can check. And I think he came second in ESL or something like that. So not bad. And then afterwards, he went back to uh, Zhongshan. When to Zhongshan, he... Um, he then went into uh, Hong Kong U Medical School. Uh, he first went, actually went to DBS, so my, my school, and then to Queen's College, and then to um, uh, Hong Kong Medical School. And um, he studied under the guy called James Kentley, which is a very important person afterwards. Uh, we'll talk about uh, James Kentley later. And then he became a doctor, uh, but he didn't, pr apparently, if you're from Hong Kong U, you couldn't practice in Hong Kong at the time. And so he was the first Western doctor in Macau. So he, he actually was uh, in uh, Jinghu Yuan uh, for one year in, Mac in Macau. And then he went back to um, China. He realized that you know, it's more important to um, cure China than to cure an individual. So he realized he needed to get into politics. So he tried to uh, 
come in contact with Kang Youwei. So the, the guy, the, the main guy in the 1898 100-day uh, um, reform um, to, to chat on equal terms, what to do for China or with China. Kang Youwei was like, you know, you can be a student. That's about it. Uh, Sun Yat-sen was like, I'm a, I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor. I'm not going to listen to you. So he actually was mentored by Zhong Guanyin, so one of the uh, buyers, one of the, uh, one of the uh, industrialists used by Li Hongzhang. And he actually wrote a letter to Li Hongzhang in 1894 talking about what China should need to do. So a little bit like, uh, like modern economics where it's, it's having life cap uh, debt capital to life capital uh, as to, to uh, use, uh, to change the political system in order to leverage more on the resources that China had. And obviously 1894 was a very busy year for Li Hongzhang because it was the Sino-Japanese War, so Li Hongzhang ignored him. When uh, Sun Yat-sen, when Li, uh, Li Hongzhang ignored Sun Yat-sen, he was like, what do you mean ignoring me? This is, must be a horrible government. So he started the revolution. So he went back to Honolulu. He started, his, um, he started with 20 people. He started his own first revolutionary group uh, called Xin Zhonghui, mostly Cantonese immigrants in Honolulu. Started their own uh, revolution uh, in 1895. Used mostly triad members in Guangzhou. Um, a few of them got drunk. Talked about the revolution too loudly. It ended before it even started. Uh, Sun Yat-sen then fled, cut off his queue, fled to Japan. Then fled to England. And in England, what happened was, actually the best thing that happened to him. Uh, he was in London. He walked past the uh, Chinese embassy, and uh, he got kidnapped. The official realized that he was, because after the, uh, the first revolution, he was already a criminal. Uh, he was wanted, and so the, the official recognized him and then locked him up in a room. Okay? And, then he had a, and, and then he wrote notes, to, because James Kenley, remember James Kenley, the founder of the medical school, um, was in London. So he wrote a lot of notes to James Kenley, the janitor, uh, um, um, African gentleman would not do it until uh, Zhen Yatsin would pay him. And so he paid him. Uh, the, the African uh, gentleman then uh, gave the note to James Kennedy. James Kennedy then saved him. Uh, he, was actually this, he was actually just one day away from being shipped back off to, uh, to China to be executed. And so, but because of this, his, his reputation then f uh, shot up to the roof. He then wrote a, bo a book called Kidnapped uh, in London. And so he was then the the, everybody in Europe or, or, and in America or in the international community would look at him as the progressive individual. Yeah, James Kentley actually is interesting. His great-grandson is John Kentley, who is a, a war photographer and journalist. He has been uh, kidnapped by ISIS for, um, since 2012. So, so this is, if you check out uh, John Kentley, C-A-N-T-L-I-E, he's the great-grandson of the gentleman who saved Sun Yat-sen, the father of modern China. Yeah, and so afterwards he, he did a few, and during the Boxer Rebellion in 1900, uh, Sun Yat-sen did a few, he tried to do a few, um, he tried to do this um, a revolution again with the backing, well, very interesting, of Japanese uh, people, financially and militarily. But then because one Japanese then uh, took the money away without buying the artillery, and so the whole thing just kind of collapsed in 1900. Uh, during the Boxer Re uh, Rebellion. And for most of the time, he was then in, in, uh, in, uh, in, 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 Beige in, in Japan. Japan, actually, if you look at it, was actually a major policy to nurture these revolutionaries because, for China, because the, the biggest beneficiary of China was to go into turmoil is Japan. China would not, uh, Japan would not want a China that is strong and united. Uh, Ch Japan would want a China that's divided and in turmoil. And so the best thing is always to finance the, the, uh, the revolutionaries, and Sun Yat-sen was one of them. And Sun Yat-sen there, he actually changed his name to a Japanese name called Nakayama, which is Zhongshan in Chinese, which is where he's from. And that's why his name is also uh, Sun Zhongshan, but Zhongshan is actually a Japanese name, Nakayama. Yeah, and so, and so he was in Japan most of the time. Uh, and, and then after... Middle Mountain, yeah? Middle Mountain, Middle Mountain. It's also, it's, that's also where he's from. So Zhongshan is the area. 